Music producers, what is up? Today I am back with the marketing mistakes you make. So uh, kind of like a Dr. Seuss book, I guess. Kind of what it sounds like. Uh, but I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, right? These are a lot of marketing mistakes that a lot of people make pretty early on, but also pretty much this is something that a lot of producers do like even a few months into selling beats online and it's just these things are ruining your growth and overall it's just ruining your time right the fact that you're spending your time doing these mistakes is it's it's ruining it right it's just your time can be spent doing so many other beneficial things for your brand for just helping you sell beats online and, and just your, your time can be spent so much better so this video is just all about saving that time and also time is money right so my goal is to save you time and put you in that right direction and hopefully at least give you time to do other things to make you money because nobody wants to work for free nobody really does work for free these days because time is money so there's no point that you should waste your time to try and make money um, you know that just makes sense right like it's just these marketing strategies are just wasting your time and it's just ruining the ways that you can make money and, and ruining the ways that you can grow your brand on social media so let's get into it now as always why should you listen to me these videos are a little bit longer than most content on YouTube and I'm asking for a lot of your time today right so why you know what does this guy know about growing social media and monetizing an audience on social media well here we go for February now, this is by February 26th, by the way. So uh, we've definitely hit over a million views this month. Uh, 15,000 profile views, over 2,000 new followers this month on TikTok. And on Instagram this month, we have done freaking 1,800 followers. So by the time that this is over in uh, February, we probably would have hit 2,000 followers this month, which is just insane for Instagram growth. So I know a thing or two about growing a brand, uh, not wasting your time with content, and also monetizing that content as well. So, as always, I do wanna say, and just let you guys know, right, these videos are long, and these videos do take some of your time, but once again, I'm not here to waste your time, right? This video is gonna be very valuable to your time. And what I'm gonna tell you in today's video, right, the outcome that I give you, the strategies that I give you, they're never luck. It's never you're gonna get lucky. It's that these are actual strategies that if you put the work in, you will achieve this because a lot of these producers who are doing the stuff I'm telling them, within a freaking days, within a freaking two to three weeks, they're blowing up. The homie Overthrow, I'll show you guys this later, I'll show you right now, dude, dude has hit a million views on one TikTok. That's insane, and by the way, he talked to me like two weeks ago. So within two weeks, he also doubled his followers on TikTok, by the way. It's been insane for that guy. So what I'm telling you is that this is not luck. This is actual strategy that has been working for a lot of people and working very well. So if you also wanna learn more about selling beats online, check out our free masterclass in the description below given by the founder of Heat, Robin Wesley. And our Discord's also open to everybody nowadays. So this only used to be for CCS students and we still have restricted channels and access for only the CCS students, but we also have a free um, open access to anybody where you can come chat and talk about music, marketing, whatever the hell you want to talk about. Also, every month I'm doing a $25 gift card only for our CCS students in the Discord. Um, so yeah, if you're unaware of that, make sure you go enter that. Now, why I'm making this video today is because yesterday in our Discord I saw this message. And I guess this was probably like three days ago by the time I made this video, but nonetheless, it was within like the past like five days. So, TK Music. Uh, music. <laughs> Such an asshole. He said, yo, hear me out. Don't we all have the same problem? Not getting enough views, sales, etc. Why doesn't everyone just follow for follow? That would solve it. I know it wouldn't work that easy, but it would still help. And then Pato Master 25 came in with a amen, haha. And thankfully, Adamas, Adamas? I don't know how you say his name, actually. Um, just butchering names. He said, not at all. Do you want art? Anyways, it's a really bad strategy. And I'm gonna explain to you why. But a lot of producers think that this is a really good strategy, that's, that this is going to get them closer to their goals, right? If they do follow for follow or these engagement groups, right, it, it's, it's bound to trick the algorithms and, and help them sell more beats. And uh, it's just a waste of your time. And let me explain why. So uh, also, sorry for flaming you guys once more. The, the whole video, the whole reason why I'm doing this video is to save your time and save your money and hopefully make you money by making you do better things with that time that you're allowing to do these bad things for. So, 
follow for follow or engagement groups. Um, I think engagement groups are more popular than follow for follow these days, but they're pretty much the worst things that you can do. In social media right now, they are like the absolute worst things that you, you can do for your accounts. Why I say this is because you're just avoiding the actual problem. And I'll tell you that in a few slides. But here is why engagement groups are essentially going to ruin your social media and they're just ruining your time by being in them and also like you're wasting a lot of time doing this fake engagement stuff. Let me show you why. So follow for follow and engagement groups, they used to work. Like I'll be 100% honest with you, like years ago, they used to work amazingly. And like it, it, it was a strategy. Like it, it, I mean, it worked, right? Until one day the algorithm had a major change. Right, the algorithm, algorithms, I should say, because this is on every platform nowadays, they made a major shift in how they dictate what they push out to reach people and, and like what they deem as good content. But before that change, right, the algorithms, they had a heavy focus on either view count or subscribers. And I mean, it was pretty much both, right? Um, a lot of the times, right, buying views on YouTube, buying subscribers, it was a really big thing back in the days because it used to kill it, it used to crush, it used to like skyrocket a channel, follow for follow, sub for sub, it used to be a really huge thing back in the days because YouTube just saw that if you had a lot of views or if you had a lot of subscribers, um, it didn't really matter too much about like the overall engagement of those people, it's just you had a high amount of those metrics, right? YouTube was like, oh, that's a really good channel, like, yeah, like, let's push more out of that guy. But remember, that was before. And these algorithms have changed completely and they're, they're always changing, but there's only, there's always one guarantee of how to be successful, but the algorithms are constantly ever changing, but there's always one guarantee. And I'll tell you the guarantee at the end, but there's always, they're, they're always changing, right? There's, there's, it's a computer learning AI thing. Like it's, it's always going to keep adapting and adapting before that used to work. But nowadays that does not work. Once more, I'm going to say this again because I really, really want you to get this in your head and like understand that this is this is like one of my biggest beliefs for social media content is that when you focus on these strategies of like follow for follow or engagement groups, you're just once more avoiding the actual problem and you're not solving the actual problem of getting more views on YouTube. You're just avoiding it. You're trying to like go around it and it's just it's not going to work especially in 2022 and further on like this shit is just not going to work anymore because the computers are just not gonna allow it to work so we'll talk more about the problem and solutions soon but here's the biggest reason on why this follow for follow or engagement group strategies they, why they just suck nowadays now of course i do want to give a quick disclaimer here and say there's nothing wrong with reaching out and collaborating and working with other producers and enjoying other people's productions and leaving nice comments about someone's production, there's nothing wrong with you engaging with other producers. Especially if you like genuinely like their stuff and you wanna collab with them, 100% do that. Collabing is a great way to get a name for yourself and start just making make beats a little bit easier because now you're not doing the whole thing, you're only doing half the equation, right? It's just here is where most producers mess up. But I wanted to give this a disclaimer just to let you know there's nothing wrong with collaborating or enjoying other production. So many producers comment on other producers type beats. And it's a comment that goes a little bit like this. And trust me, this one's gonna strike a nerve in some people. It's like fire beat, bro. Had a sub plus one. Plus one, I sub to you, bro. Check me out. So that's how a lot of producers are trying to promo themselves and make a name for themselves. So they're, they're, they're going to other producers' type beats and they're leaving a comment like this. Like this, uh, by the way, this is not like a genuine comment of like, let's work together. Like that, this is so bullshit of a comment. So um, once again, right, your, your goal if you're trying, if you're watching this video, more than likely your goal is to, to sell beats. Cool. So how you spend your time is you're trying to promo yourself to other producers because those producers will buy your beats. Now, let's just ignore that typo real quick. <laughs> but I really want you guys to understand this, right? Your goal is to sell beats online. So you spend all your time promoing yourself to other producers because pro 
producers are going to be the ones who buy your beat. Right. You're trying to sell beats to artists. So you spend a good majority of your time promoing yourself to other producers. Do we get this? Do we understand why that is an issue? Also, like somebody, like this literally happened like the other day on the Matthew May interview. The interview about a producer making a living from selling beats online. An interview that only producers would probably watch. Somebody came and said, I got freestyle rap beats. Why would you comment on this content that's geared specifically 100% towards producers. Do you think producers who are watching this video are gonna be like, oh, this guy has freestyle rap beats. I need some freestyle rap beats. No, they do not care. They're producers. They don't need that product. Just to make sure like we understand this, like 100%. It's like you're a company that sells water boats and you need to find a new location for your store. So you're like, okay, like we sell water boats. You need water to use our water boats. So our location should probably be somewhere where there is water because a person needs water to use a water boat. So you think long and hard about that. And you're like, oh, oh that's easy. The desert. We're gonna go to the desert and try to sell people water boats. That is what you're doing as a producer when your goal is to sell beats online and you're commenting like fire beat bro plus one sub me back on other producers content like you like you see where the issue is now i like a good old game of devil's advocate and i want to make sure we talk about both sides on this to make sure that this video doesn't go unaddressed with anything so before we play this game though i want you guys to look at this screenshot of YouTube literally telling me why my video is performing so good. So YouTube says, nice, more regular viewers are engaging with this video, helping to increase its reach. So this comes directly from YouTube telling me why my video is doing really well. It's because regular viewers, and if I had to guess, regular subscribers who view my content are also engaging with the video, it's helping to increase its reach. Okay, that's directly from the source of YouTube on why my video is doing good. But anyways, right? Let's say that you spend all your time <laughs> commenting on 400 other producer videos, which I gotta say is pretty impressive. That's a lot of time, right? That's a lot of your time. Sadly, you're wasting it, but it is a lot of your time and, and, and you're doing pretty good in, in terms of overall work ethic. It's just you're working backwards. You're hustling backwards pretty much. But let's say you do it and you gain 30 new subscribers and 300 new viewers. Okay, that, that's, that's pretty good, right? Like, pretty cool. But what do you think is gonna happen when you upload your next video? Are these producers who subscribe to you just out of like reciprocity of like, hey, he subbed to me, I'll sub to him back, or like you're in an engagement group with somebody, Right, do you think that the next time they see your video, they're actually gonna click on it on their homepage? Right, are they really gonna view it for even a decent amount of time because they're genuinely interested in the content you're posting? Right, the, the answer to that is no. Right, why would a producer care to click on your type beat video? Like, they don't need it. They don't need what you have. It's, it's just that simple. They're not gonna watch it for that long because they're not interested in it. Like you, you understand? So now you have to think how YouTube's computer algorithm is seeing all this, right? YouTube has seen that you had decent audience growth, but now that same audience doesn't care to watch your videos. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Do I know every single thing about the algorithm? No, no I do not. But let's just use some common logic. Is YouTube, right? Remember, remember that screenshot? YouTube said your video is doing really well really well because more of your viewers and subscribers are watching it so do you think youtube is going to push a channel or its videos where people's subscribers I even too many typos in this i must have made this late one night where people's subscribers or recent viewers 
just aren't clicking on the videos and aren't even watching the videos, right? Because nobody's gonna watch it if they're not clicking on it. So your click-through rate's gonna be god awful. And like, you're barely gonna have any watch time because nobody's clicking on it. Because you're targeting the wrong audience, <laughs> right? You're like, you're, you're not trying to target producers, but by you setting up all this stuff and, and messaging all these producers and having them sub to you, right? You are targeting the wrong producers. You might not realize it, but you're just hurting your channel's growth. Like, dude, this in this video, I think you guys can tell, like I'm just kind of a little bit starstruck that, that this is still an issue for people. Cause to me, this is so fundamental of like, you don't want to do this, but it's still such a large issue. And it, it just leaves me a, a little bit confused. Like it really does. So what's the problems and the solutions? Well, that's why I make these videos. I don't make the videos to tell you guys problems. I also do both. We, we do solutions as well, because I want you to leave this video with some action to where you can actually fix this and also get way more for your time. So problem number one, if it hasn't been obvious, is you're engaging with producers while your main goal is to sell beats, aka products to artists. So are you ready for the solution? Because it's, it's gonna blow your mind how easy this is. So find a very popular producer in your niche. Okay, and the goal of this is to now, we're gonna take the same time you've been spending or can be spending, and we're actually gonna help you talk to artists and not producers. Because remember, you're trying to sell beats to rappers. So we don't need to target other producers. Now, if you're doing sample kits, yeah, that works. But if you're selling beats, it doesn't work. So find a very popular producer in your niche, search by prod by producer name, filter it down to the last month, and then comment on those rappers posts and then hit them up on Instagram. So let me show you guys real quick, right? We're gonna go to, let's do Ann Chamberlain. It's the first name came to my head. So we're gonna do prod by Ann Chamberlain. Now, if you don't filter it, you're gonna see his channel and some of his recent videos and, and videos where he's featured in blah, blah, blah. So you wanna go filters and do this month. Now you need to pick a popular producer because it's going to pick in all the artists who uploaded beats and gave credit to Ant Chamberlain in the title or description. And you guys can see here, right? These are people who are going to be using the beats in the same style of production that you make because you're gonna find a producer, a large producer who makes the same style of beats you do. So now you found all these artists who are using the beats that you create. And you can see, right, this guy has his Instagram in his uh, YouTube description. So all you have to do is comment something nice and hit him up on Instagram. And if they don't have their Instagram anywhere, just comment something nice about the song, something specific about the song so they know it's personalized to them and you put some effort into it and just ask what their Instagram is or ask them to hit you up on Instagram. And there you go. Now you can start spending your time trying to actually talk to artists because you're trying to sell beats to artists, not producers. So that's pretty much solution number one. And also, you guys might say, Ryan, this is a complete waste of my time. It's, it's, it's never going to work. It's, it's so much time. You know, I just want things to come to me. And if you make good content, it can. It can come to you. But especially when you're first starting out and you're still really not making any ground of what you're doing, here's a fun fact how I originally grew this channel. So I went through YouTube and BeatStars searching through tight beats and I would personalize every single message that I sent to every single producer. I did this because I knew if I personalized it, it would come off a lot more genuine and friendly and people would at least give me a shot and be interested in what I had to say. Okay, because if you just spam shit, people are just gonna brush it off or, or be like, oh cool, thanks. Like they're not gonna care. But if you personalize it, it does take more of your time, but the results are gonna be so much better. So after I sent a personalized message to every producer, I would then ask them, hey, you know, do you want to join my lead magnet of what I call the 30 day producer challenge? Now, it would be a 30 day email sequence that would include information about selling beats. And it was like super beginner stuff. Like I did this within about like three to four months of making my channel. So all I would do is I built this 30 day email sequence that would literally run on autopilot no matter whenever somebody joined up. All I had to do was get people into my funnel by just reaching out to them on BeatStars or on YouTube. And I would have this 30 day email sequence set up that once more, it was super beginner stuff, but it was still very valuable. And also in the emails, I had made emails about videos that I had made before. So in those emails, I would say, if you want to hear this fully explained, check out my video on YouTube. So within this 30 day sequence, I was now starting to build up YouTube viewers, right? 
I made the lead magnet to attract people. That sounded really cool, a 30-day producer challenge. That sounds super fun. And then within that, I would throw my own gems and my own YouTube content, and people would then become viewers of me. So yeah, don't think that like you're too cool to do the manual work, because I did it. And I mean, look, dude, we're almost at 10K subscribers on this channel. And this channel started two years ago? Yeah, so like, dude, like, don't be afraid to do the manual work. It is gonna take your time, but you have to learn this shit. And this will like really separate you from who wants to put in the work and who doesn't want to put in the work. So then, problem number two, marketing starts with awareness. Now, this isn't so indirectly related to the first one, but it does come down to time and how you're wasting your time. So, how many of you guys have bought heat merch? This is a quick question. Now, it doesn't exist yet. So a lot of you guys probably should have been confused there. But if it did, if heat merch had been out for the past eight months, right? I can't just hope that you're going to stumble on it. Like I can't just hope that one day you're gonna Google looking for heat merch or that you're just gonna find yourself on the website where there's heat merch, right? That's not gonna work, okay? You need to make people aware that you exist. First off, then you have to make people aware of your product and that your product exists. And a lot of producers struggle with the first one. So to give you guys an example of, of like a product existing, right? I always start these videos with showing our free masterclass so that way you know about our product and our free masterclass. Because the product is the course, but we also have a free masterclass, which is our lead magnet. So simple, right? In, in order for you to watch it and then turn into a course member, a paying member, you need to be aware it exists. But before that, you have to be aware that this channel, that this ecosystem of us exists. And just to be honest with you guys, a lot of producers still have no clue we exist. So marketing for us is just getting more awareness to more producers. Because we make so niche content, it is kind of hard to reach a lot of producers because we're actively only doing Selling Beats content and we're not reaching a lot of, a lot, a lot of music producers. So the first step is like, yeah, we're making people aware of our product, or the second step is we're making people aware of our product. The first step is they need to be aware of you, right? Somebody can't buy your beats if they don't know who you are in the first place. And like I said, this is where it comes full circle with everything, right? In order for you to sell beats or sample kits, you need, you need, you need to be discovered. And I'm gonna keep on saying this, until like, until my just, I can't talk anymore. But tight beats are not discovery content. Tight beats will not help you reach new audiences. Maybe after a year and some luck, maybe. But you're just gonna like hope for the next year that your tight beat blows up? And just to be honest with you guys, I know I say this all the time, but your, your tight beats get no views because it's bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the barrel content. And once more, right, I want to bring in the fact that in order for you to sell beats or sell sample kits, which is what Overthrow does, right, it was very hard for him to do that because nobody knew that he existed before that, right? Nobody's gonna buy your beat or your sample kit if they don't even know that you exist, the person selling it. And that's why you make content on TikTok like this that's actually engaging content because that is what gets you discovered. He has a million fucking views on this video, right? 8,000, 8,000, 9,000, 11,000, 11,000, 13,000, 845,000. Okay, that's the same one right there. 5,000, 2,000, 4,000. The whole point is, is that once you learn how to make this, the overthrow used to get like 600 views on a, on a TikTok before he booked a call with me, by the way. Like not to hate on him or anything. It's just like, the, the dude needed help and I helped him. And like content is my thing. Like it's so obvious to me, like content is my fucking thing nowadays. And I say all this just to show you guys, like you need to be discovered first before anybody can buy anything from you. Like everybody wants to hope that people just like stumble upon themselves but people need to discover you first. And that's like, there's one thing you can get out of this video is that people need to know you exist before they can buy your services. I know that's nothing groundbreaking. It's just, you need to be reminded of that because that's the biggest factor, you know, talking about your sales, right? 
The guys who have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube as type B channels, they get a lot of sales because they've already been discovered. That's all it is. They're not doing anything groundbreaking with content. The top guys who are killing it with type beats on YouTube and the people who are bottom, who are struggling as all hell and can't get 10 views, they're doing the exact same thing. It's just that guy's been discovered already. Well, this guy's just hoping it'll work out. So why not use social media content to propel your discovery? Like in two weeks, Overthrow made a video, got a million views. Like why, like why not? Why not try this at least? What, what will it take for you to accept that only posting type beats is just stopping your growth on social media and you're just hoping for a prayer at this point? Like when will you accept that content is becoming more popular than ever? Like. Is, like, is this not enough to you to show you how important content is and how much content can like skyrocket your career? Like now he's discovered. Now he has people who want to buy his beats and buy his sample kits. Now he can build a brand. Now he can build an audience because he's been discovered. And that's all you're doing. Every time you're posting a TikTok, you're, you're just trying to get more people to know who you are and funnel themselves into whatever it is you're doing. And with tight beats, it's just, it's not discoverable content. So anyways, that's going to be the video for this week, guys. Peace out.